Today is Sunday, January 11th, and this is News from the Frank. Hey everyone, welcome to News from the Frank. It's been a while since the last one, so apologies once again. I'm going to release a few in the next few days. Um, today we're going to talk about the latest software update, 6.1, that came out three days ago. There was so much in it, I'm going to split this video in two. Today I'm going to focus on changes that apply to all cars, including all the original cars from two years ago, like mine. In the follow-up video, I'm going to focus on the changes that only apply to cars that have the autopilot hardware. So let's get started. This change is a big one, both literally and figuratively. Owners have reported that it can take up to 150 meg to download, either over the home Wi-Fi network over, or over the car's 3G, and that it can take nearly two hours to install in the P85D. Some of the changes that have arrived we've been asking for for over two years. Some of them we've already known because Elon has talked about it, and some of them were a complete surprise. So let's get into it. So the first one is trip energy prediction. Elon talked about this about a year ago. So now when you plug a route into navigation, uh, an extra display pops up and tells you how much battery you're predicted to use, both for the one-way trip and for the round trip, and will tell you whether you're going to be able to make it or not, given the current amount of charge you have. There's also a new graph that shows how you're going to use that energy between your uh, starting point and your destination, and gives a prediction that takes into account the elevation change on your route. It also shows you your actual consumption compared to the forecast consumption to show you how you're progressing. In one other small change, you can now show the, the battery percentage on the dashboard, which again helps tie it up against what you're seeing on that new range chart. There are also a couple of other navigation changes. The first one is a route overview. So the um, part of the screen that you tap to give you either the north up or the direction of travel you can now tap it a third time and it will give you an overview of your entire route. The other minor change to navigation is that you can now control the volume of the navigation instructions. While the car is speaking the navigation, you can use the left thumb wheel to adjust the volume up or down. Next is a change that we've been asking for for two and a half years since the car first came out. The car has always had one of the best backup cameras of any car out there today. And finally, after two and a half years, we now have reversing lines. The backup camera now shows plain white lines when you go into reverse, uh, and they will t curve as you turn the steering wheel. In another small change to the display, graphics will now overlay the backup camera. Beforehand, if you, say, pressed the home link button, uh, the camera display would shift down. Now the home link displays and various other displays overla overlay the backup camera without it having to move. For those of you with parking sensors, Tesla has also increased the level of detail. At the front now, there are four different displays that show each of the sensor readings, and on the back, three displays. And then there's a whole list of other changes. Uh, you can now press and hold the trunk button for a couple of seconds to open the charge port. Tesla has introduced something called smart preconditioning. So if you have a regular commute, and if you have your both home and work destinations, uh, programmed into the navigation and the car can determine that you are doing a regular commute it will set the uh, AC or the heater automatically before you get in the car so it will try and figure out when you're going to leave the house and it will adjust the heating or cooling appropriately so that the car is at temperature by the time you leave now it will only do that if it can figure out that you actually have a predictable commute so it won't apply to everybody. Next, some minor changes to the calendar. Um, the car will now read the notes in a calendar invite and will pull out the first phone number it can find and lets you do one button dialing if you want to join a conference call. A few enhancements to the media app. You can now shuffle a playlist or shuffle tracks on a USB and you can jump back to uh, a previous track on a USB. For tune-in radio, if you're listening to podcasts, you can now fast-forward and rewind and jump back to the start. And for users in Europe that are using audio, uh, the uh, car will now buffer the signal much better than it used to do before. Next, Tesla say they've simplified the steering wheel controls. I struggled to understand it when I read the release notes, but I played with it yesterday in a, in a friend's car who's got 6.1 
And actually, it is a lot simpler. Now you can press the menu button, and a menu pops out that simply lets you choose uh, the screen brightness, the fan speed, the temperature, and you can then select those with the scroll wheel. And it will remember whatever that setting was. If you want to adjust something else, you just press the menu button again, choose whichever other setting you want to choose, uh, and then use the scroll wheel. Very easy to use, much more easy to use and much more intuitive than the current pretty cumbersome way they've got it set up. And finally, a couple of other small ones. One is a new menu item called Factory Reset. Uh, that's really designed for if you sell the car and you want to clear out all your Wi-Fi settings, all your memorized settings, calendar, phone, all those kind of things. There's a single button that lets you wipe all of that out. And then last but not least, in the energy display, uh, it used to default to giving you your instant projected range, and now it will default to your average projected range. All right, so all those changes apply to everybody. There are a separate set of changes that apply if you have the new autopilot hardware, which I don't. So in the next video, I'll go on and talk about that. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.